Hudley ho there, Nevis. It's just me. Uh, still sick, but not as sick. Um, turns out I had uh, severe bronchitis, and it was uh, causing an asthma attack. So that's why I've been uh, out of it. Uh, I'm on some meds now, and I seem to be improving. I'm not completely well, but I'm getting there. Um, so, yay me! Yay me! Anyways, I am uh, uh, on the road to recovery, so I'm starting to get things back in order. Um, I've been sick enough that I worry about whether or not I'll be employed as of Saturday, but we'll see. Um, uh, now, uh, one thing I did do today is I helped record... Uh, an episode of the Appendix N podcast for the Tome Show. Big fan of the that show. Uh, uh, I know Jeffrey Greiner from way back, but uh, uh, this one had two other Jeffs on it who are not, in fact, Jeff Greiner, who runs the Tome Show. So, go figure. Um, and uh, I and the two Jeffs uh, discussed a work by a writer named A. Merritt. Now, the Appendix N podcast is um, designed to sort of go through all of the writings of uh, the authors listed in the Appendix N, in the old DMG, the old Dungeon Master's Guide, that Gary Gygax listed as his, um, his inspirations. Now, I've read a lot of Pulp Fiction by comparison to a lot of people. I am not, you know, J.T. Uh, what's his name, Joshi or anything, but I'm I'm good at, on a, a lot of pulp stuff, and I, uh, I I like reading some of the older classics. And um, A. Merritt is certainly uh, you know a, a classic writer in that genre, and I I will say that without giving away too much about the show, he's very much a writer of the pulp genre in that he sort of hybridizes all these other influences into a very archetypical pulp story. Now, uh, like I said, I like pulp. Uh, and, you know, I'm a big fan of Robert E. Howard and, um, um, and Lovecraft and, uh, you know, th those guys. But, um, Whenever you read those stories, you always have to go in with an understanding that uh, the genre conventions are filled with things that, by today's standards, would not be really considered acceptable. Now, with some writers, their, um, their skill at writing is sufficient that you can sort of look past those limitations. I mean, H.P. Um, um, Lovecraft was a racist. Uh, there's not much you can get away from that. Robert E. Howard was a racist. They were both sexist. Um, but you also have to understand that at the time, that was not quite the same thing that it is now. Now we've, you know, had the civil rights movement. Um, there was a Martin Luther King to open people's eyes. There was uh, a Cosby show, as much problems as Cosby has now, his influence on the acceptance of African Americans in everyday culture can't really be denied. He certainly had an enormous influence. Him and various other popular culture shows, uh, you know, helped sort of made it less the other, which helped, you know, the the way the the culture sort of accepted. No, these guys, you know, uh, African Americans and whites and. Uh, Hispanics and Asian Americans, what have you, are not all that different, and that uh, you know they are all part of our collective uh, 
culture, we've had the conditioning of having those examples available to us. When H.P. Lovecraft and Robert E. Howard and A. Merritt and such came up, there were biologists telling us that they were, that uh, African Americans or Asian Americans, whatever, were uh, uh, inferior. That biologically they were inferior. That they needed Anglo Saxons to help them run their lives. Um, and they come from a different cultural place. That said, you can't ignore the fact that they are, in fact, really kind of a racist. Um, and you can't sort of ignore that those are elements in those stories. You can accept it and move on and still like the story for its merits. Um, but you can't ignore them. You can't just, you know, those don't exist. Yes, they exist. Those elements are there, and you have to acknowledge them. And when I was reading Merritt, I, I had to acknowledge them. Um, you know, there there are some racist and sexist uh, things in those stories. Does is, does he write a, a, a decent story? Yes. Um, and if you want a picture of what the broad swath of of uh, a pulp genre was. He's a good place to start, actually. Um, Lovecraft and, and Howard stick with us because they are much more stylistically interesting. Uh, they they did the same thing of, you know, taking other things that people had done and, you know, adapting it to their use. But they did it in such a way that their own voice was very clear. And it became, you know a Robert E. Howard story, an H.P. Lovecraft story. They are distinct. People would ape their style, but they were the one that created it. And um, Merritt doesn't really have that. So it's interesting. He, he writes a good story, um, but it, it's here is how to tell a good pulp story. This is not necessarily here's how to a distinctly this author's story. And I think that's very telling. Anyway, um, like I said, still sick. So not 100%, but I'm getting there. Uh, I will post something tomorrow. Uh, hopefully I'll feel better tomorrow. That'd be nice. Uh, I'm, like I said, I'm feeling better now. I'm not, you know, dying from a cough. So that, there's that. But I'm obviously not 100%. Um, anyway, I thought I'd, I was if I was well enough to record one thing, I was well enough to record another. Um, I hope everyone has a good day. Uh, and uh, here's the feeling better tomorrow. See ya.